My name is Sebastian Isaac. I'm the marketing director for Electra. And today I'm going to be uh, discussing briefly some of the Atom products and the Atom CPU and the purposes of Atom based products that's uh, currently available in the South African market. The Atom CPU was actually introduced around uh, March in 2008. Now we have three different CPUs that are available. The one CPU is called the Silverton, the second one is called the Diamond Work. Now, basically, the differences between the Atom based CPUs and the normal Intel uh, processor that you will find most commonly in desktops and in notebooks is that the power consumption is reduced a lot on the Atom based CPUs. And also, the Atom based CPUs are used mostly for uh, everyday usage compared to a conventional notebook that a lot of guys use it, you know, for a lot of communication a lot of word processing, uh, handling of spreadsheets, and some guys even use them for a little bit of programming and for playing games as well. Now, the difference between most Atom-based uh, platforms and the, no and the conventional notebook is that the Atom-based platform is meant for, as I said, for everyday usage where uh, receiving email, communication with Skype, uh, reading a couple of spreadsheets, surfing the internet, all kinds of communication uh, can be handled by the Atom Atom based platform. Now you do get different types of Atom uh, platforms. You have ultra mobile PCs and you have MIDs. MID stands for mobile internet devices. Now the difference is that uh, each device has a different size. Small notebooks or sub notebooks as it's referred to now are in the range of about 7 to 9 inches in the screen size. So you do get some that are around 10 inch but uh, the common sizes that you will find is between 7 to 9 inch. This is a triple E PC, which is a uh, sub notebook. As you can see, the screen size is roughly around 7 inch. And then on the other hand, I have the a similar product, which is a little bit more advanced. This comes with a 9 inch screen. Uh, this is a, a gigabyte product, and this is also a touch screen as well, where you can swivel the, swivel the screen and you can use it as a tablet PC. Uh, the, the only difference with the uh, cheaper tablet PCs that you will find is that they don't really use digitizers but they use touch sensitive screens. This is a typical UM PC that you would find. It comes with a split open uh, keyboard, uh, fully functional, fully mobile uh, keyboard for typing and you have a mouse pad which is used to, uh, instead of using a normal mouse. And then the older type of devices which doesn't have the keyboard is one of these devices which is also an ASUS product. To make things even a little smaller, this is what a typical MID device looks like. Right? Also with a split open uh, screen. Uh, a lot of people confuse MIDs with mobile cell phones or, or any device uh, along, along the lines of a cell phone. But uh, the purpose of this device is to enable communication, especially uh, using a voice over IP with products like Skype or MSN Messenger. Uh, using, um, surfing the internet, receiving emails, uh, having your daily planner, your, your calendar, your address book, everything in one device. Now, the reason why this device is a little bit different from a cell phone is that you have the full functionality of typing in full addresses, typing in full emails, instead of using a, a normal cell phone where uh, it uses predictive text and you also have keys that you have to press two or three times to get the right letter. And with this device, it gives you a fully functional uh, QWERTY keyboard that allows you to uh, type full text, full, full emails, uh, web addresses and everything uh, just by the functionality of the, the actual keyboard itself. Now, most of these devices, as you will see, do come with cameras. Uh, the UMPC has a built-in camera, which is located here. The uh, sub-notebook also has a built-in camera that's located here. And in most cases, the, the, the standard uh, EPCs as well also have a built-in camera that's located here. So from the, the camera function itself, you will see that full communication is possible with video and voice. And a lot of people make the mistake of thinking that, you know, if they go to buy a notebook, that they need to have something that's going to be, uh, you know, the best performance and the best, uh, you know, specs that's available. But a lot of people don't really use all the power that they have in the notebook. Using a program, a program like Word, uh, you normally only utilize maybe sometimes between 7 to 15 percent of your actual uh, uh, power of the processor itself. And even the RAM, it just depends on the amount of memory that you, uh, that you have in your notebook. Because sometimes a, a very big text document that could be something like 40 or 50 pages can be less than one meg, which is not a lot uh, in terms of your system resources. 
But if you are playing games and if you are using uh, video editing and uh, audio editing, then you would need a, a normal notebook. Now, these functions, especially when it comes to game playing, video editing and audio editing, are regarded as high-end functions. That's when you would need a, a proper notebook with a decent graphics card to actually be able to carry out these functions. But in terms of everyday, everyday usage for students, for uh, people who are just looking to communicate, people who are looking to type out uh, letters or assignments, read email, or even uh, surf the internet, those kinds of communications are actually what the Atom CPU is actually cut out for. Uh, you do have two, di two different types of Atom CPUs, the Silverton and the Diamondville. The Silverton uh, CPU is uh, a 800 megahertz CPU that's built more for these types of devices, which is the mobile devices. Hopefully in the near future we will see some mobile cell phones uh, also being uh, built with the Intel Atom CPUs. And then the other devices similar to the ASUS EEE PC and the Gigabyte Notebook that I have here are also shipping with the Atom CPU which is the Diamondville platform. The Diamondville platform is available in three different CPUs. You, you have the standard CPU which is a 1.6 gigahertz um, single core. Then you have the 1.6 gigahertz uh, dual core or hyper-threading CPU, sorry. And then you have the, uh, the Diamondville 1.6 gigahertz dual core, which is very, very similar technology that's built on the core, du uh, core 2 dual CPUs that are currently available. The reason why the Atom CPU is, is such an extraordinary CPU is that the CPU was actually designed from the ground up. In current generations of CPUs, when CPU manufacturers actually design CPUs, they use existing technologies to build CPUs or to manufacture or to actually design. And one CPU will, 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 will have a remnant of the previous generation and all future generations will, will work in the same way. But with the Atom CPU, it was a CPU that was actually designed from scratch just to cater for the, uh, for the, the uh, low cost or if you call it the, the more inexpensive uh, platforms that are available. When it comes to, to the CPU, it's, it's built on new technology, technology that hasn't been designed before but it uses very similar processes that you would find that's available on current generation of uh, CPUs like the Core 2 Duo and so on. Now with that, uh, a typical CPU, uh, like your current uh, Core i7 CPU, has roughly about 713 million transistors, which is needed for the actual processing, especially for the high-end functionality. But for this type of platform and the Atom CPUs, you normally have roughly around 47 million transistors, which is a lot because Previous generations of CPUs did not have the amount of technology that's built into the, the Atom-based platform. And because of the, the, the functionality of the Atom CPU catering for your basic communication needs, your uh, you know, uh, word processing, Excel spreadsheets, or, or whatever spreadsheets that you may be using, it's highly suitable for that kind of function. And a lot of people have the misconception that you know, it's a cheap notebook. Yes, you know, the, the, the notebooks are referred to as ultra-low-cost PCs but it does not mean that it is cheap in any way. On some of the platforms, you will still have wireless LAN, you will still have Bluetooth. It just depends on the type of uh, add-ons that you need that just increases the cost a little bit. But for basic functionality, this item is, is more than perfect. I actually use uh, ASUS EEE PC myself and also started using the Gigabyte. The EEE PC weighs about 900 grams. Right. That the Gigabyte is a little bit heavier because of the touch screen and some added features that's built in, but it's just a little bit over than the KG. And one of the biggest, biggest problems that I, that I have is that when you're flying, especially when I fly to Hong Kong mm -hmm. and if I'm traveling to Taiwan, to, to uh, transfer from one terminal to the next to, to get to Taiwan can take you roughly about 45 minutes to get there. And carrying a big notebook that weighs two or three cages, it really is you know, a tedious task carrying right. the notebook around. And having something like this is so much of a breeze, you know, it's so much lighter. The, the thing is, when you go to meetings, you just carry your, your, this uh, notebook around or the, the ASUS EEE PC around, take notes. Uh, it is, um, I mean, a lot of people complain about the size of the keyboard. Right? I mean, the keys are, are small com compared to a normal notebook. Right. But people get used to typing, to texting on their cell phones quite easily. You know, and uh, after a couple of hours, you actually get used to, yeah. to tapping on, this, on a small keyboard. Meeting minutes or, or whatever notes you have to take, one of these devices or even one of these devices right. to actually achieve the same task.